In this video on categorical arguments and reasoning, I'll explain where to put the x for those categorical syllogisms using the Venn diagram method that use an x in its diagramming. And I'll explain why the x sometimes goes on a line and why at other times it doesn't. This problem of where to put the x is probably at the top of the list of some of the problems that go along with using the Venn diagram method. But don't feel bad about that. It's, it's common and you'll get it. It's important to do because if we're evaluating categorical arguments based on our diagrams of them, then our diagrams better be accurate. As you can see, I've already translated the argument into standard form, it's here. And then I've taken that standard form and I've replaced those terms with the variables S, P, and M. So it's the same argument. I've just replaced those categories with those particular letters, and I've been consistent throughout. If you need help on how to get an argument into standard form or going from standard form to the symbolized version below here, you're going to want to see my other logic tutorial videos on my YouTube channel. It's a short but growing list, and they go step by step to explain how to get to that point. We'll be using this form below here as we explain where to put the x. So here we are with our argument. And from earlier videos, we learned that when faced with a universal claim, as in premise 1, all m or p, and a particular claim, premise 2, some s or m, we're going to diagram the universal claim first. And that's what I've done here on the bottom. That is the correctly diagrammed all m are p. I have it as a standalone here on the left because sometimes it's easier to recall what it looks like when trying to duplicate it in the three category Venn diagram here on the right. So now that we've done that, the next thing we've got to remember is what we're actually, actually trying to accomplish when we're shading. When we shade for our purposes here, it looks like we're adding color to this section of the M category. But really what we're trying to illustrate is that that shaded region where we've added the color, that region doesn't exist. So remember this, in Venn diagrams, the shaded region doesn't exist. This will help us determine where to put the X in premise two. So let's do that now. I've reproduced the second premise which is an I claim here as a standalone Venn diagram. We know that the claim sum SRM means at least one member of the S class is in the M class, and we indicate that by marking an X here in this region that I'm highlighting in green. So what we want to do is we want to accurate, accurately reproduce that in the big Venn diagram here. So we can see that we're dealing with these two categories and that that X has to go in that green region there, the area that's highlighted green. And since I just explained before that the shaded region doesn't exist, so that would eliminate from putting the X here. That doesn't exist, so we couldn't put it there. That really only leaves another one other option, and that is to put the x here. We wouldn't put it on the line because that would be uh, essentially the region that was cut out. So the x here is accurate in representing premise 2. So now what we've got is we've got our entire argument accurately diagrammed. And so now we want to evaluate that diagram to determine if that conclusion is present, the question we're asking is, is the conclusion present after we've accurately diagrammed premise 1 and premise 2? And it is. The conclusion, sum s or p, is this region here. Now, we didn't diagram the conclusion, but the conclusion is diagrammed as a result of diagramming premise 1 and premise 2. There's an X in some SRP, and so this argument is valid. 